What's up, YouTube? Ryan here. Welcome back to 1517 Films, where in every episode I am always contending for the faith once for all delivered to the Saints. In this brand new year, this first episode after months of being away, the first episode of 2020, what better way to start than with, well, what time of year is it? It's Epiphany. Stick around. <music> Now, I know what you're thinking. You're watching this the day later, uh, but it, currently, right now, time now, it is the 12th night. It is the evening of January 5th, 2020. You're watching this on January 6th of 2020, Epiphany. January 5th, that 12th night, uh, to make a Shakespearean reference here, um, it's the 12th night of Christmas. So yes, Ryan's Christmas tree is still up. And I'm actually incredibly disheartened because I had this really cute video I was trying to put together of the boys helping decorate the Christmas tree and it just didn't pan out. I've got lots of other things coming down the pike and I'm excited to get to that. But let's start with it now. It's dark, it's evening. That's why the lighting is so crazy because it's dark. I wanted to do this when it was dark because the season of epiphany is a celebration of light breaking forth into darkness. You see, Epiphany is marked by the, the narrative of the wise men following the star. Now, the nativity out in my front yard, uh, on one side of my house, there is the nativity. There's Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus and the shepherds and the star and an angel. On the other side of my yard, always the wise men traveling to and then now tomorrow though the lights up uh, on the roof of the house will be shut off because the Christmas season is over the nativity shall remain throughout the season of epiphany and the wise men shall be there so epiphany uh, is that time of year where the church recalls the wise men traveling and following that bright shining star that light in the sky that was pointing them towards the light of all mankind. The, the light that has broke forth into the darkness. The, the, the quote from Isaiah, the people who have dwelt in darkness have seen a great light. That is epiphany. So as we wrap up the Christmas season by taking some of the ornaments from the tree and putting them away because Christmas is over, the season of epiphany is just beginning. The season of light of, um, and light is a beautiful thing to comprehend because, well, really, there's no such thing as darkness, I suppose. Darkness is just an absence of light. And there can only be darkness when there is no light. But the light of men, as John would call him in his gospel, Christ has come into the world. And it was the light of that star that led the Magi to Christ. So there is sadness when Christmas is over. We still have that joy. Sorry, cheap pun. Christmas is over. And it's time to put the Christmas things away. Which is kind of why I wanted you here with me. Why the light is all janky. Hopefully the audio is good. I got a new microphone. So while I'm taking down the tree, why don't we talk about some of the things that are, that are coming along here. So, uh, that story of our faith, uh, if you haven't figured it out by now, uh, the story of our faith is going through the Augsburg Confession. And that's a beautiful thing to do because every Christian of every denomination should be familiar with the Augsburg Confession. So we're going to keep going with that. The reason I have a new microphone, uh, which is part of what's, well, there's a lot of reasons. Oh, strike that, reverse it. So, uh, a big contributor, actually, and, and going with the, the theme of, of Epiphany here, a big reason why I haven't been able to, to make as many videos as I want is an absence of light, darkness. You see this big bay window here. Uh, this is my main light source when I make YouTube videos. The neighbors uh, <laughs> uh, can all see when I'm making a YouTube video because of the big bay window. But the darkness is coming so early now that it's pitch black by the time I even leave work, let alone 
by the time I get home. I don't have that light. So uh, it's been difficult to make videos. Uh, and of course, when you're a father, it's always difficult to find silent time uh, to make videos. So uh, nighttime seems to work quite well. And hopefully in the future, uh, I'll be getting, um, oh, that's a beautiful ornament, um, some, some better lighting uh, so that I can film in the darkness. But we have this big, beautiful light here, this tree. Uh, my wife always calls me Clark Griswold when it comes to the tree because every year there seems to be more and more lights on it. I mean, just, I don't even think the shoddy cinematography can do justice to the beauty of this tree. But uh, light, 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 light. And this tree uh, is wonderful because I used it to teach my children. Um, you can't see it, oops. I suppose it doesn't matter, the tree's coming down. Um, but uh, the tree skirt at the base is red. Asking the children, why is the tree skirt red? Why is the foundation of this tree red? Oh, the blood of Jesus is the foundation of our faith. And every little ornament and bauble of Christian doctrine, through it all is weaved the red tapestry of the blood of Christ. Just like the red ribbon that runs through the entirety of Scripture, the blood of Christ. So we recall that this little babe born in Bethlehem, uh, Christmas is not in my house. It's not happy birthday, Jesus. I know we're supposed to be talking about Epiphany, but this is um, just a little bit reflective here, so let's just do it. Christmas is never uh, happy birthday, Jesus, in my house. Uh, whether or not Jesus is born in December 25th, uh, I'm about 50-50 torn on that one. Yes, he was. No, he wasn't. It uh, doesn't matter because we don't celebrate happy birthday Jesus in this house. In this house, we celebrate the incarnation of the Son of God into human flesh. That God, the second person of the Holy Trinity, Jesus Christ, incorporated into his divine nature, our human nature, for the sole purpose of redeeming our human nature. And so we celebrate the incarnation of God's only Son. And so this year with the boys, we talked a lot about this tree. Why are we hanging red ornaments on it? Uh, where's an example? Like this one. Why, why a red ornament? Well, the blood of Christ, obviously, they go to uh, maybe the fruit. Maybe the fruit on that tree of knowledge of good and evil uh, that Adam and Eve were forbidden uh, to eat from. And then also, how about, I know there's an ornament in here somewhere, uh, how about the fruit of the tree of the cross? Oh, the fruit of the tree of the cross. So we have the tree of knowledge of good and evil. We have the tree of the cross, both bearing fruit. So the tree of life in the Garden of Eden that bore fruit unto eternal life, the fruit of the cross which bears fruit unto eternal life. What is that fruit of the cross? Look at this. Lovely, lovely. My wife picked this one out. Beautiful job. What is the fruit of that cross that we partake in? We actually literally eat. You see, Adam and Eve, well, they literally ate fruit, didn't they? From a tree that if they ate, literally ate the fruit of that tree, they would live forever. What is the fruit of the cross but the body and blood of Christ that hung upon it, huh? That he says, take this and eat it, this is my body. Take this and drink, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. So there's so much to learn from a Christmas tree, but we've strayed from Epiphany back into Christmas, haven't we? Not difficult to do. Yeah, my little boy. Um, <laughs> you can definitely tell the boys help because the ornaments are so close together in some places. Um, so Epiphany is about light and darkness. That's what Epiphany is about. And as I, I, I don't know if I said it earlier or if I said it in one of my takes, earlier takes, um, but uh, don't worry, I'm not re- undressing the tree. 
Um, I didn't get that far in my previous takes. But uh, there's really no such thing as darkness, huh? Darkness being just an absence of light. So epiphany is the revelation, uh, the coming of the light. The light that breaks forth into the darkness. The light of all men. The light that no darkness can overcome. The coming of Christ. And it is by the light of that glorious star over Bethlehem that led the Magi. And they knew the prophecy, though not necessarily the meaning. So they knew to ask that they were looking for a king. So they went to Jerusalem. They met Herod. Poor, unfortunate souls. They were surprised that the light of men was a child. Now, we're so used to the idea of the, the three wise men being at the manger, but they weren't. So, they showed up in Bethlehem following that star that might not have appeared at Christ's birth. The angels were certainly there singing to the shepherds. And what a glorious sight that must have been. But the star might not have been there. But there certainly was a star. A light that broke forth into the sky that was clearly, clearly a sign of prophecy fulfilled. And they followed it and found the Christ child, not the Christ infant. They found him in his home in Bethlehem. Oop. You can definitely tell where Noah's been playing because some of these ornaments are falling off. Oops. There goes an icon. So, it's weird, huh? January 5th, and the tree is still up. Still lit, still shining. Well, it's coming down now. I always feel bad for my youngest son because January 6th is not only Epiphany, it's also his birthday. And so the poor little boy, his birthday is always associated with the bringing down of the tree. But his birthday, being on Epiphany, is also associated with that revelation that Christ is the light of the world. A light no darkness can overcome. So that is, in a nutshell, the epiphany season. And I think that's all of the ornaments. No. Oh no, by no means. So, what have we talked about? Well, we've talked about... I don't know if you can see them here. Mary, Joseph, the Christ child. These will stay out as well, I think, uh, until the Epiphany season is over. We've talked about the blood of Christ, that ribbon that weaves from Genesis through Revelation. The, uh, the blood of Christ that is the foundation, that red tree skirt at the base, the star that the Magi followed. This Star is Epiphany, the, the light that shines in the darkness, the celebration that light has come to darkness, and really, darkness cannot understand it, can it? No, no we don't. But the light shines anyways, and we rejoice in that light. We do, because we've been given the Holy Spirit that tells us who that light is. So I'm going to finish up on the tree here, getting this down, reclaiming my living room. And uh, hopefully with this new microphone, I'll be able to take you inside my church. And inside the church attached to my son's school. Because for that, that, that liturgy series that I want to start this year, I want to talk about church architecture. And there's a couple of really good Lutheran churches in the area to talk about that at. And uh, the Augsburg Confession, we're going to continue with that, the story of our faith. Uh, maybe we'll do a couple of Mystery Christian Theater 3000s in the future. Any ideas you might have, let me know in the comment section below. Thank you again for your patience while I was away. The holidays were nuts. That Advent season that I really wanted to talk to you guys about on YouTube, that, but the preparation 
that took a lot. The Christmas season, these 12 days, was bustling with activity, and because of the darkness, it's been difficult. I had to, 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 to sacrifice video quality uh, in order to get just a video out on account of the darkness, but I've got a big light here uh, that helps. <laughs> so until next time, have a blessed epiphany season. The light of all mankind has come into the world. The word has become flesh, and he has made his dwelling among us. He is our Emmanuel. He is God with us, and he is a light that no darkness can overcome. Tried, but the third day he rose again from the dead. He's ascended into heaven, and he sits at the right hand of the Father to come again in glory one day to judge the living and the dead. But right now, as we wait for that, we are in epiphany, and we celebrate that Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and mercy won for you by Jesus' vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins.